Welcome to Growth and Inspire, where we examine topics that make us feel inspired and grow. I'm your host, Bonnie Yam, and we will be posting frequently on topics to help you run your tax more efficiently, run your business better. It can also be issues involving business planning, personal issues such as how to select an appropriate Medicare plan and take advantage of some of the financial help from the government. Join us on this journey as we will have lots of interesting guests such as insurance experts, finance and healthcare experts. Um, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a, re a review if you enjoy what you hear. But now let's get started with today's episode. Today, our topic is Medicare Savings Plan. And with us today is Michael Hassenbaum from Advocate Care, Advocate Health. Hello, Michael. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm excellent. I'm so happy to see you uh, on our podcast. Before yes. we start, uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your company? Sure. Um, I've been in, uh, an entrepreneur uh, for 35 years. I've also worked in corporate sales, corporate training. And uh, I started in the Medicare business as an independent agent uh, a little over a decade ago and formed an agency back in 2016, where I also train and support other agents to work with Medicare beneficiaries, Wonderful. very focused Wonderful. on that particular space. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, more and more people hitting 65, I think they really need to know the service yes. that you're providing is so important, you know, healthcare. Yeah. yeah. The number so, one question I get is why is Medicare so complicated? <laughs> It's because it's expensive. And I said, really because it gives me value <laughs> <laughs> that I can help people. Yeah, I, I know. It's like, you know, that's the number one thing. I also hear that if you don't have enough, um, a lot of people go bankrupt if they don't have enough money to pay for their healthcare services. So that's super important. And you want to make sure that yes. that's been taken care of when you start your retirement plan. Absolutely. So today, instead of talking about, you know, a lot of people talk about the Medicare part A, B, C, D. Uh, actually, let's give them a little bit of like tips on, you know, what are the savings plan out there, Medicare savings plan that's provided by the government. I think that's just as complicated too. Yes. So um, let's start with, you know, can you tell us the different types of Medicare savings plan that we have? Sure. I mean, when you look at original Medicare, there's there's part A and B. Anyone who has their red, white, and blue card have seen that. It says hospital and medical. What people don't always realize is that there are hospital deductibles. There's not an unlimited amount of days in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And part B doesn't have an out-of-pocket max. So that 20% that people pay, okay. if they don't have a plan or they don't qualify for one of these programs, that 20% in theory could be, is unlimited. Okay. Yep. So where the Medicare savings program comes into place, I'm going to be talking specifically about New York because New York, every state has different rules. Yep. Mm -hmm. So in New York, um, one of the nice things for people looking to qualify to get some additional uh, resources and get some help is Medicare savings program application does not consider your financial assets. In other words, okay. money in a 401k, you own property, have a lot of money in the bank, that is not considered. The only thing that's considered is your income, mm -hmm. right? So your social security income would be one of them. And if you have earned income, they have a formulary where they don't take 100% of your earned income. Nice. Yeah. So, so it's a working. very <laughs> simple one page application that people would turn in to their local department of social services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does the Medicare savings program do? Well, there are really three different ways you can, uh, different programs you can qualify based on your income, right? One is what is known as QI, qualified individual. Mm -hmm. And in order to qualify for that, your income, if you are uh, single or married, there's different amounts. If you're single, divorced, or widowed, and your income is 2,335 per month or less, you will qualify. If you're married and it's 3,169 per month or less, you will qualify. And the first benefit that you're going to receive as a QI is you will have your Medicare Part B premium paid for. 
Right now, the standard amount is 174.70 per month to have Medicare Part B. And um, some people may have even had a penalty for not enrolling in Part B mm -hmm. uh, when they were first eligible, and they may pay more than that. Mm -hmm. So if you qualify QI, not only will they pay their Part B, they will also pay your penalty that you owed for late enrollment. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty significant. Nice. That's over $2,000 yes. a year if more in your pocket. Yes. For you. Yes. Yeah. The second benefit is there's a program called Extra Help or Low Income Subsidy. Those terms are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And that is specifically for reducing prescription drug premiums, deductibles, and co-pays. Mm -hmm. So if someone qualifies as a QI, not only will their Part B premium be paid for, but they will automatically uh, qualify for extra help. And that means they won't have any prescription drug deductibles. Depending on the drug plan they have, it will be greatly reduced or in many cases down to zero. And their co-pays will, won't be more than $12.50, zero to $12.50, depending mm -hmm. on the plan and the prescriptions. So those are pretty significant. And because New York changed those amounts in 2024, more and more people can qualify because the income limits used to be a lot lower. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So they should check it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a simple plan. Any, any Medicare agent can help um, fill it out and work with you to get that done. Because like that could be a pretty significant part. All right. So, you know, like the $2,000 part B. And then on top of that, you know, I know a lot of people take five, six, seven, maybe even more. So, I mean, yeah. So any additional help, that'd be great. Uh, I mean, that could be unlimited if you don't have a cap. And there's also sure. always a deductible too. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, other, the next program, when you fill out the Medicare savings program, is uh, a qualification called Qualified Medicare Beneficiary, or QMB. Mm -hmm. And this is an, another level. So not only do you get your Part B premium paid for, but once you are QMB, medical providers that accept Medicare cannot charge you for deductibles and coinsurance. So that can be very significant. You know, that 20%, they would no longer be able to charge you. And whether you are on a straight Medicare or you have a Medicare Advantage plan, mm -hmm. you know, that's a private insurance company with a Medicare contract that typically has co-pays nice. for services or in some cases deductibles, someone that is QMB can... Um, let their provider know that here's my health plan and here's my QMB number, and they will not be able to be charged copays or deductibles. Yeah, let's say I have a lot of specialists, and that's expensive, <laughs> even though if I'm in an HMO, I still pay $60, $75. Yeah, correct. It yeah. can make a big difference. And there's one more um, opportunity a lot of Medicare companies. Uh, health plans will have a dual special needs plan. We call them in the industry DSNPs because mm -hmm. SNP, dual SNP. Now, there are different qualifications for different plans, but there are many health plans throughout New York that if you are QMB, you will qualify for their dual special needs plan. Mm -hmm. So not only will you have a zero premium and a zero copay for most of your services, but you get enhanced benefits. In some cases, um, I've seen plans give a grocery card up to $235 a month that you can use for groceries or utilities or gas or transportation or yep. over-the-counter items. And that does not interfere with if you get SNAP or any other, other resources because it's great. part of the benefits. That's, great. That's really great. Yeah. So. QMB is pretty significant. I think there's 800,000 New Yorkers who qualify in many That's domains. A lot. 800, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and many don't know about it. This past year, our agents, we, we helped wow. hundreds of folks enroll yeah. that previously were not qualified. Wow. So, so let me just like kind of repeat, like, so the QI, you get savings on the Part D and also part the Part A, uh, Part B's uh, premium. Yep. And yep. the QMB, 
you get the co-payment and Correct. also deductibles. Correct. Also taking care. Yeah. Yes. And then also Perfect. if you are in the Medicare Advantage plan, then you have all those flex benefits, whatever, 20 yes. something, whatever to help me pay for gas, um, all, all those utilities. All freeze, food, all not, yeah. So they not just help me with my, my health care, you know, help me with my day to day. All yeah. the spending too. Uh, uh, yeah. And when I'm retired, I don't have a lot of extra income. And yeah, it helps. It's, yeah. It's, it's very significant. And so the other little nuance point to this, not to get overly detailed with uh, everyone, Bonnie, but sometimes people will go online to fill out an application for extra help or low income subsidy. When you do that and you go online, they do ask for your resources, how mm -hmm. many assets you have. And that could keep you from getting extra help. But when you try and do a, a, an application with the Medicare savings program directly to your local county mm -hmm. department of social services, it doesn't ask oh, yeah, for your resources. So it's also a back door to get the extra help for I people think. who tried the other method once before. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, you know, for people who, who do have lots of assets, but let's say my housing, you know, I already pay for my house, so I don't really have to pay yeah any mortgage and all that and I don't work anymore so my income is low and yeah. even if I do have lots of money in my 401k I don't have to withdraw it if I have low in yeah. living expenses so I might qualify right <laughs> that, that's a nice backdoor yeah. way of getting getting into those one absolutely of those yeah and then the third type is what is known as a full Medicaid dual eligible and that, that can be determined by filling out the Medicare savings program. Um, however, if somebody is in need of having a full-time or a part-time aid at home or a long-term care program at home while they're Medicare eligible, they have to actually have full Medicaid qualifications. Mm -hmm. So, in those situations, there's a different form. Of course, there's a different form, right? It's the actual New York State Medicaid application. It's a, It's got more pages because in that situation, they will ask for your resources. Resources, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the re, So the income levels for QMB or full Medicaid are the same. For a single, you know, $1,752 a month. For a married couple, $2,371 a month. So those aren't difference between QMB and full Medicaid. The difference is if you need full Medicaid for those extra Medicaid mm -hmm. benefits, you will need an actual Medicaid application and your resources need to be below $31,000 a year for a single, yeah. $42,000 for a married yeah. couple. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> well, if you want so much more from the government, you have to Give yeah. some out. <laughs> Give some yeah. back. It, it is a, a needs-based program. It's just one makes it a little easier. The other, you have to go through a little more paperwork. Um, but we've helped folks in both situations um, many times, walking them through the process, and um, they're usually very, very appreciative of that. I think so too. Yeah. Instead of like, you know, paying it all to healthcare expenses, I want to give some to my kids so they remember yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I might not be able to bring it after I'm gone, but yeah. I want some left. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. How about Epic for New York? Um, I hear that there's another another program. It's, it's been around for 30 years. It's the State Pharmacy Assistance Program. And um, how it works, you have to be age 65. The Medicare Savings Program, you can be on disability and under 65 and qualify. Mm -hmm. But New York State Epic, you have to live in New York, be age 65. And if you're married and your income is below $100,000 a year, mm -hmm. or you're single, widowed, divorced, or married living separately, mm -hmm. and you're under $75,000 a year, you'll qualify. So how does it work? Wait, wait, let me ask you, anything about good. assets? No, 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 no. No, good point. No, no assets. There are no questions about, you know, how much Great. property you own or your 401k or anything like that. Yeah. It is strictly income, right? Okay. And they that include your social security, but it is strictly income. So what the benefit, there's two benefits for someone who qualifies. Number one, 
it can potentially reduce their prescription drug costs. So you have to have a drug plan, whether it's through a Medicare Advantage or a standalone prescription drug plan, but that'll be your primary. And once you qualify for Epic, you would give both your Medicare ID card and the Epic card to your pharmacist. Mm -hmm. They will put that into the computer and then they'll track it the whole time. Every time you make a copay for your medications, it is tracked. Once you reach the Epic deductible, from that point on, Epic will reduce your prescription drugs to where the max you will pay is $20. It'll be between zero and $20. So I'll give you a real life example. My mom qualified for it when she was alive uh, several years ago, and she had a lot of expensive medications. So she was spending, you know, three or $400 a month on her prescriptions. That's it, yeah. her, her Epic deductible was around $1,200. Mm -hmm. And once she hit that, all her co-pays will reduce dramatically. She maybe spent a couple more hundred bucks the rest of the year. So it's a, it's a great way to protect your pocketbook. It does not cost you anything. Mm -hmm. And um, if, and this is an important part, if you need to make a plan change, mm -hmm. normally we have the annual enrollment period, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. We have maybe the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, the first quarter of every year. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're locked into your plan till the following year. But if you belong to Epic and you can enroll anytime, you can make a one-time plan change anytime during the year. Yep. So I'll give you, for instance, I had a, a client recently um, needed to make a plan change because of new health conditions, and we were able to find a, a plan that was better for her. Mm -hmm. um, we enrolled her in Epic. She qualified. And because of that, she had a special enrollment period. So we were able to change her plan for September 1st instead of waiting until January 1st. Yep. More savings. So, yeah. Yeah. More benefits, more savings. Always yes. great. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like a lot of learning, you know, I'm getting hearing. I should take notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's why we saved the podcast. <laughs> I mean, this is great. You know, anything else that you want to add? No. So those, those are, those are really, really important programs. There's a thing called benefitcheckups.com. That is not based on income. It is not based on your plan, but it is designed for uh, folks that are over 65 and they just want to see if there's any other resources or benefits that are available in their area. So, for instance, we had um, a client in South Carolina lived in Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. They made plenty of money. They didn't qualify for any of those programs, but they went to the to the to that site and they found out they had free parking at the beach because. Why not? A <laughs> so, few dollars. Right? Every <laughs> Everybody likes something for free. So. Yeah. So that's another good resource. But those are the main programs that we try and make sure everyone is aware of, they mm -hmm. qualify and kind of take it from there. And that's, of course, outside, over and above, reviewing their Medicare. Of course, of course. Of course. Hey, I, I just want to ask you, did I hear like from Cigna on their website, they actually do something like that too? And then they tell you maybe free meals or whatever. <laughs> free yeah, meals. So, so a lot of companies on these Medicare Advantage plans, they try and act like a health plan, not just transactional. And they want to make sure that you have incentives to get preventative services. And they have a resources for life some people have. And they can help you find all kinds of things. Some have actually yeah. full-time yeah. social workers that That's will. Me too. Yeah, yeah, help. very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think I learned so much. You know, every time I talk to you, I learn a little bit more. So that's wonderful. Good. Yeah. And I know like um, medical Medicare savings plan is like a pretty important part of the Medicare program. So don't forget about it. And mm -hmm. also the annual enrollment period is coming up. Um, it starts October 15. So if you want some assistance in evaluating a plan and maybe you want to make a little bit of a change to get some more of the benefits, we're here to yeah. help. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, please leave us a review. Um, your feedback will help us reach more listeners and improve our content. And don't forget to follow us on our social media platform. Um, if you have any questions, uh, topic suggestions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we love to hear from our listeners. Uh, 
join us next podcast will be on business evaluation. So until next time, stay inspired. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.